Welcome to another episode of the Physically Jacked and Financially Stacked podcast. Today, I've got a great guest who's Mr. Adam Power from Powered Media. Uh, Adam is a friend of mine originally actually introduced in Marbella. He's got a hugely successful uh, media agency and has recently moved to Dubai where everyone who's moving, who wants to take over the world. Uh, so thank you very much for jumping on the podcast, Adam. Absolutely, man. Thank you for having me. One of the first things I want to get into is when we first met, you told me your backstory of how you became an entrepreneur and started your own business which is probably one of the best stories I think I've ever heard and is super fucking motivational for anyone listening to this right now who is hesitant about like taping the leap and like trying something. Would you mind elaborating on that? So long story short, what happened initially was I got fired from my job. Like I explained, I got fired on a Wednesday, got my last paycheck on the Friday and essentially came home on my back against the wall, took out the laptop. One of those moments where like you've nothing to lose, right? What the hell am I going to do? And I came across Ty Lopez, which I'm, I hope, I'm sure a lot of people will, who are watching this would be aware of exactly who he is. Ty basically brought me onto this webinar, right? The usual, the usual funnel of, <laughs> that we're all aware of today. This was 2017, 2018, so um, I was completely unaware I was being funneled into a sales pitch, right? But he basically brought me into the system where he showcased how it's possible to create your own income, create your own become self-employed not to have a job because previous to that I failed so many jobs you know I failed as an electrician I failed at driving a forklift I failed in endless factories like I failed so much stuff right so I was like okay I need to I need to just create my own thing because I was sick of failing but every failure brought me to the next level of, of, of success right so each was a lesson but eventually uh, got the money together dived in with Ty Lopez um, and essentially started started learning figured out I was uh, didn't know even the term entrepreneur back then didn't know the term freelancer or business owner hiring knew nothing about those terms or what they were and came back you know six months nine months had to head down and eventually woke up one day and you know I was actually making progress so I was just kind of learning studying basically reprogramming my brain for such a long time to basically understand how everything worked understand personal development which is something i never came across before because i was going on the wrong path previously right so when i got into this path i picked up speed as fast as i could and i saw this is an opportunity for me to make something happen so essentially kept pushing kept going and eventually got one client got two clients got three clients and eventually replaced my previous jobs with my own job which i became a freelancer at the time i didn't know the term back then but um became a freelancer and just kept uh, kept growing and growing and growing and building, building, building the best I could from there. And long story short, ended up in Dubai. <laughs> Came to Marbella first where we met and then now I'm, now I'm here in Dubai. What would you say was the biggest win in that process? Was it first signing up the first client and then getting the belief like this is something real and can work? Because I, I, I remember like, yeah. anyone who's an entrepreneur listening to this, we're not meaning, but in terms of like the dopamine hit, you get a fucking payment, clients sign up, be like fucking buzzed. Yeah. But like at the beginning, I remember like, I don't know, like selling eBooks or something for like 20 quid. I remember waking up the next day and being like, fuck me, someone's paid me 20 pounds overnight for something. Yeah. And I haven't done anything. I'm like, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is insane. Yeah. Did you have that type of feeling? Yeah, I suppose like when, a fir- when the first client, which was right now, everything I do is e-commerce, right? Everything I do is e-commerce. But back then it was more more local, right? So my first client was a barbershop. And when I had a verbal agreement that I can send an invoice for $400 and I was coming into an account of mine that, that, that I owned and, and it, that system was there, even at just a tiny scale, I ran home and I had endorphins like I'll never experience again. Like that was the greatest thing ever. I was just like, because I heard Steve Harvey say one time, find a way to make ten dollars do that ten times make a hundred dollars do that ten more times you have a thousand dollars do that ten more times and, and eventually you get to a million right and he's worth 200 million now so he's just been doing that so i was like okay if i just get one thing going where i make four hundred dollars a month and that four hundred dollars i learn i get the confidence i build in the future it can be eight hundred dollars remember at, at that time i think my previous job was paying like twenty eight thousand dollar thirty thousand dollar salary so and I was super unhappy. Like I was so, so, so unhappy. I remember having actual tears in my eyes, <laughs> brushing my teeth before going to work because I just couldn't face another 12 hours of this. So eventually I just knew foot in the door and that gave me dopamine and endorphins like I've, I've never experienced before, right? So yeah, 100%, that's, that's a moment for me, I remember. Something that's interesting, I don't know if you find the same, is 
almost at the start, it's more fun and exciting. Yeah. Because you can suddenly see the possibility, right? Yeah. And it's, I think a lot of the fun is climbing the mountain rather than getting to the top. And I think yeah. it's those beginning moments you always like. I always remember when I left my full time job and I was like, yeah. I was fucking buzzed and like the rush of like, what the fuck? Like not knowing of the uncertainty of like the roller coaster of entrepreneurship. Yeah. And as much as it has like, this is what I explain to everyone is there's extreme lows and there's extreme highs about yeah. running your own business because yeah. there's times you feel like you fucking walk on water and you're unstoppable and there's times yeah. like you just want to hide under the bed and you don't want to deal with the shit anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's the most important word in running your own business is resilience and the ability yeah. just to keep going when things aren't going your way sometimes. Yeah. Um, what were some of the lessons that maybe helped you build up that resilience? So the opportunity for me, I was like, okay, this is an opportunity because I used to always say, so I, I was that kid in school, right? I was that kid where the parent, my parents used to get called at least once a week to be like, you know, have a chat with Adam. Adam can work for two, Adam can do his homework for two days in a row and he's caught up with the whole entire class, right? I, 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 it's never been an, an intellect issue with me. It's always been a lack of interest. So, right? I, so I was that guy. So I knew I just needed a vehicle. I just needed a vehicle and I can create my career because I used to go to the guidance counselor in school and sit down and he would have every single college degree, every single, you know, basically formal education pathway that was available. And I mean, I used to be coming home with a highlighter and she flicking through sheets and sheets and sheets, trying to highlight, mm, maybe I'd be an engineer, mm, maybe I'd do an apprenticeship and I've just had no interest in any of them, right? And, and, that, and I wish I did because I wanted to have an avenue, but I used to always say to myself, something's going to come okay so my parents would say to me you know what are you going to do like what are you, you know you can't you can't just you have to do something with your life okay and i was like don't worry something will come and my parents used to say my mother used to say to me you know adam what about you know when when you're in your 30s and you have a family you need to be able to afford to take your family on a holiday you need to be afford to make sure they have a good life and i was like that never even entered my mind to worry about that because i know i just need a vehicle and that vehicle is going to come okay so when I got fired from that job and Ty Lopez came, it was like... This was, it, was it a paid ad that came in front of you? It was a paid ad, okay. of course it was. That's ironic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was YouTube, right? So I clicked the paid ad on YouTube and it brought me in and I was like, ding dong, could this be a vehicle, okay? And I, I, I always used to say, when my teachers in, in school or, or, or you know, parents, or even you know, friends in school who were like, you know, trying to say, oh, you're going to be on the welfare forever. Do you know, jokes between mm. friends, whatever. Um, they used to say things like that to me so i'd say no 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 there's going to be something come my way and i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to latch onto that and that's going to be and then when i got fired from all these jobs literally back against the wall nothing nothing to to work towards a bell went off and said this is the avenue i've been waiting for my whole life for and i dived in so that resilience came from the opportunity that i saw could this be it could this be where i can get you know a career path and you know have a vision to to be financially free or, or or be successful in the future through this career path and it's not formal education it's my own thing and then that, that opportunity built my resilience to make sure that i'm never going to let this surpass me here plan there's no i tweeted yesterday i never met a successful person with a plan b it's this was just it's this or nothing. It's this or nothing. It's this or it's this or be or go back and find another factory job for the fifth one in twelve months that I've been fired from. You know, it's like this is the only thing that I can do. And then I latched on. The resilience came, and I think my parents, people like that, saw a spark in me. Okay, he's really serious about this. Okay, because there was like a three or four month period where people thought I was in my bedroom playing video games all day. You know what I mean? Whereas I was in my my bedroom reading, thinking, grow rich trying to find money together to buy uh, another book or, or you know find YouTube videos and stuff like that reprogram my brain um, and eventually I just that resilience came from from seeing the opportunity in a year's time because I read a quote from it was in the secret actually and a guy said when you shine the lights in your car they only go about 9 to 18 feet okay so when you shine the light on your car you can only kind of see a little bit ahead but you can drive at night time from New York to LA with that, with that same nine to eighteen feet of of light, and I because it, the next eighteen feet open up, and second, so I as you said, move along, yeah, as you move along. So I said, okay, here's my big vision here, and my big vision at the time was making my big vision at the time was making the same twenty eight thousand dollar salary from my computer. In twenty seventeen, that was just completely on a different stratosphere of my existence. So that was my biggest goal. Right? So I said, okay, one foot in front of there, eighteen feet, eighteen feet, eighteen feet. And I started to move towards there, and I eventually got there within nine or nine ten months, or whatever. So, opportunity came, 
and I've ne- I, I said I'm never I regret this for the rest of my life because I see people on YouTube all the time I would have saw the, the people of, on, of the YouTube game living what could have been me and I would have just became a sour person for the rest of my life if I saw that do you think that's what a lot of people are like yeah. so you like, obviously respect that you coming from Ireland and I don't know if they're saying that I think in Australia they call it tall poppy syndrome where like basically like anyone who steps outside of the fold and like goes and tries to bet themselves everyone tries to drag down yeah. is that something that you've come across with your own success yeah of course I mean like I remember the first time I because I, I had, I had my business was about a year old before I even put my name put the Instagram handle into my bio I remember put, I remember I was in the gym and I was I was like oh, today's the day I'm going to do it <laughs> so it was like because again I think Ireland might be a very much like that Ireland's a small a small country right just four and a half million people in Ireland there's 70 plus in, in the UK right so it's a small it's, it's Ireland's a massive massive town when you think about it so basically I, I was kind of obviously fair of being judged my biggest fear was telling people I was because entrepreneur is like a buzzword on YouTube at the time right I, my, 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 my biggest fear was telling people I was an entrepreneur and then two years time being back in a factory and people saying ha ha he thought he was an entrepreneur you know that was yeah. that would have kept me up at night time right so um, yeah I think there was a lot of that so eventually when I put the name out there I'd never told anybody outside of probably five to six people what I was working on until I had it made until I had an, a salary an income coming in from what I was doing you know so I kept it super quiet until it was real and then I knew no one no one could really say anything then because I've already made it happen are you still driven by that fear of going back yeah of course I mean fear of failure is one of the biggest motivating things ever right and having again the opportunity because right now again it's the same 18 feet it's the same 18 feet every time so my my my, my vision now down here is is is, is obviously a million x times what it was when I was looking for the 30k salary initially but I'm still, I'm still just going there. I'm still just going. So, I, st- it's still the person who's five, ten years ahead of me. I don't want to be watching them in five years' time. Think I could have been on that level, but I never did this. I never did this. I wasn't serious enough for the six month period. Or I was fluting around in Marbella all summer last year. You know, I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to go. So that that fear of me being unhappy for that the future period of my life really motivates me to to get it done day to day. Really. How would you suggest for anyone listening to this that they use the same approach of looking like 18 feet in front of you because I quite like that because I think one of the biggest things I see is people are at chapter one but they look at someone at chapter 12 and then they they don't understand what it's taken to get to there and also the person you have to become to go from chapter one to 12 like you to go from nothing to a seven figure business you as a person completely have to reinvent yourself in terms of the way you you think feel and run your entire life and I don't think a lot of people recognize that yeah I would net, like comparison is definitely the thief the thief of joy, you know. I definitely, I definitely wouldn't be judging myself. I, I I would look at someone and say, okay, what's his circumstances in life? Did he start the year too earlier than me? But timing is a massive thing, you know. People timing say, is everything. I, th- I think the yeah. more I don't know if you agree. The more experience I've got, the more I've realised how important that is. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So timing, experience equals luck, right? So like that. It, the more experience you have at the right time will bring you you'll be more lucky every time so I, I would look at someone and say okay he was lucky okay a lot of things fell into place don't compare yourself with him you know don't compare only compare yourself with who you were yesterday and then like there's a great book The Compound Effect I know you read it like that book is just like okay 1% better every day is like 37 times better at the end of the year so it's like just keep getting 1% better don't worry about other people right obviously it's good to have a competitive competitive edge and good it's good to be competitive but never get yourself down saying someone's ahead of me and if someone is ahead of you use that as your deep i call it deep demon energy right use that as demon energy where like you're surviving off four hours sleep for a week because you're you're you're, you're catapulting yourself three months into the future so yeah uh, for people who are, who, who are lo- looking like that use that, uh, that that's a good thing okay if, if you're if you're feeling some sort of negative way because someone's ahead of you that's a good thing that means you've more potential in you that's not coming out yet and it's it wants to come out now it's your job it's letting you know it's there you now need to bring it out so i would i would i would class that as unfulfilled potential but don't ever let don't ever let it get you down there is people who are doing this a long time i did fail everything in the past i failed the drop shipping store even before i got my first clients i did veer off and start the drop shipping store start to try build shopify websites they failed 
So that brought me back onto this path. And I got, so like there's so many different failures. Everyone has different failures. Um, so I just kind of wouldn't, wouldn't, I just wouldn't really compare myself. It's, it's going to do you no benefit. It's funny what you said, because I use something similar in terms of a way to motivate myself sometimes. It's like, uh, it's like writing a list of haters. So anyone who's fucking pissed you off I or, or gives fuck me, I got a whiteboard. I got like fucking five, six names on there. Yeah. And literally like, if you ever need a bit of motivation and like those motherfuckers, yeah, like, yeah. and that's what you need sometimes. Yeah. And like Tim Grover talks about a look in his book, The Relentless, it's like using your dark side. Yeah. And like everyone who has a dark side, you've got yeah. something in your closet yeah. that yeah. like, I use in the gym sometimes. I'm like, when you're fucking, you're searching for something, you like just think of something fucking you hate. And yeah. it just brings that like energy yeah. that you never knew you even had. Yeah, and 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 that's a blessing. That energy is, is a blessing because I definitely I, I have that. You have that. A lot of people have that, and like that's what the story about Lamborghini. How Lamborghini was made because Ferrari said, you know, we've the best car, and he went away and built Lamborghini, right? So like you know, yeah, that's that that that's a super super valuable thing. I need to read that book actually. Right? Yeah, yeah. But I have that on my notes in my phone. I have from 2017, 2018, I have a, a list of probably 12, 13 people that were like, you're stupid or this is not gonna work or you know, who do you think you are type thing. And I was like, you'll see. I like that. The, uh, here's a really good tip for anyone listening to this as well. Like, and I give this to a lot of people in the mastermind is that if you're ever struggling like mentally with motivation, get two books by Tim Grover, Relentless and Winning, yeah. just read a chapter and your fucking brain is like, you yeah, just yeah, wanna yeah. fucking I've take on the world. I've heard, that, I've heard that a couple of times, yeah, yeah. He Mate. was Colby Bryant, Michael Jordan. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's uh, just changes the way you think about things. Yeah. And also, like, I think the big thing, particularly now, the world's in a bit of a turmoil, turmoil time, um, yeah. which we've come into. But I think seeing challenges and opportunities is a huge thing. Yeah. So even in terms of like, if you're running a business right now and it's not doing quite as well as you'd like, yeah. the seasons of businesses in terms of sowing and reaping. In my opinion, we're in a season of sowing more now. Yeah. Where it's not as easy as it was to make bucket loads of money as it was yeah. like the two years after COVID. Yeah. So it's almost like getting your ducks in a row. So when yeah. harvesting time comes around, you can fucking harvest loads yeah. and you're, then you're winning. Yeah, exactly. I would completely agree. I mean, obviously being in the e-commerce space when everyone was was locked in their house, online shopping was, was through the roof, right? So a lot of people were just making so much money at that time, you know? Cause people, a lot of people were still getting paid working from home. So the economy was still there but the only way to spend money was online. So that was a crazy time. So people were really scaling brands back then, but obviously that, that died off. A lot of people didn't adapt and they're kind of gone really back backwards now. So yeah, hundred percent. I, I like that term, so on a reading seasons. Do you think that this is something interesting I think I've started to notice that the window post COVID gave a lot of businesses a false like propulsion in terms of how quickly they grew. Yeah. And now things are normalized. Yeah it's pulled them back a bit. Is that something you've seen in e-commerce? Yeah, massively, massively, yeah, huge. I think people were, were used to just having endless amounts of sales every day, right? Not even in e-commerce, crypto, everything else that, that people were in, everything was just- Going up, anything, any, anything, <laughs> like, but that's why it's the easiest way to money. You, you put money lose. in anything, you couldn't you fucking could, lose. You couldn't lose, yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously being in Marbella, seeing people making so much money from crypto. I never bought one penny of crypto. I never bought anything. So people, so many people were just gr growing in different avenues that everything was just going up. Everything was just going up. But I knew that was going to come down. I knew that was going to come down. So I didn't want to be so diversified. But when it came down, a lot of people were just confused for a long time. It took like a lot of time to, to adapt. Whereas you just need to, you just need to get your ducks in a row straight away. And it, Kind of maybe something similar now, where it's like you know a reaping period, and it's, but it's going to be a, a sowing period soon. So it's it's just it's just that season of transition. How, do you think there's any way to learn that as an entrepreneur other than going through it? It's like one of my favorite expressions is like pain is knowledge really fast, right? So for example, when crypto was at its peak, I was up like seven hundred k, nearly a million or something, and I was going to sell it on my birthday, and then yeah. or at least half of it. Birthday's 18th December. 10th December, the crypto market dropped like 15, 20%. Yeah. And I was like, I'll wait, it'll come back. It never did. Yeah, yeah. Um, I bought loads more now and it's sort of coming, it'll sort itself out. Yeah. But I don't think there's really any other way to learn other than going through experiences yeah. like that, rather yeah. than like, if you set yourself 
to do something, you have to fucking do it regardless of what goes on outside of the world. Because particularly when you start putting money into situations, you make bad emotional decisions. Like for example, yeah. the other day crypto went up, Bitcoin went up loads and I was like, I bought loads at the very bottom and I was like, oh, I'm gonna sell it. And I was like, wait, like I was really tired. It was late at night and I had my phone out. I was like literally about to press sell. And I was like, it was like six figures worth. I was like, just fucking sleep on it, just stop. <laughs> yeah. And then it went down a bit and it's gone way back up again since. And I think one of the lessons I've learned the last year or two is to take longer in making better decisions yeah. rather than rushing into things, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. That's a very, very good point. And like, you don't you don't learn until you make a mistake, until you buy something that, that doesn't that doesn't bring our way, or you lose money somewhere and you're like, okay, I need to be, I need to check and triple check and triple check again before I invest in something like this again. Um, that comes from experience as well. It's like Warren Buffett's two rules for investing, don't lose money, and number two, don't lose money. <laughs> so, uh, Do you, what's your busy, biggest mistakes you think you've made a business so far? Biggest mistakes? Or biggest challenges you've had? Um, biggest challenges I've had, so I kind of, I think I struggled with, not now, but over the years, I've definitely struggled to, to build a team, it, the right team. I struggled to, to you know, find the right people. I struggled, struggled to recruit. And maybe I struggled to have like the best system for them to perform at the, and do what they do best. So I think it's a team building initially in the first two years was very, very tough for me. Very, very tough. Like, I think it held me back a lot. So team building something that definitely comes to mind um, but then just minor mistakes like I make a minor mistake every single day probably you know I'd probably make one between now and, and tonight I'd probably make a minor mistake but yeah different different mistakes every single day in regards to all different areas you know but again it's all a learning curve don't make the mistake I, I will not mentally note myself not to make the same mistake twice you know it's like the hot stove <laughs> <laughs> you're still gonna try it's when you go know, people come out in restaurants like don't touch the plate it's hot i'm still like yeah i still want to touch it yeah, yeah, yeah what um what would you say has been the big thing that's helped you in terms of improving your knowledge and like running your business because you, you don't just learn that overnight right and i, I think yeah. that a business will only grow to the level of the, the ceo or the, the person who's running the whole thing yeah yeah so i'm i i i think i'm a quality that i have is i'm very self-aware so i know if i need to figure out something i'll spend the time figuring that out like i won't watch game of thrones i've never saw game of thrones i've never saw any of them things right so i know if i have to study something i will i'll figure i'll study that exact thing so i take time in the morning like i have my my you know 60 minutes in the morning that's my time i i i, I sit there i think sometimes i journal I, I do what i need to do and i really get like clarity on what i need to to study and then Ty Lopez has something called that I've adapted into all our uh, coaching and training programs now called edutainment, educational edutain entertainment. Instead of sitting down and watching a pointless movie, now that, that's totally fine, watching a, watching a movie that you enjoy, it's entertainment, right? But if you're in a certain position in your life or your business that you need to crack a code, you, you I'm sorry to tell you, but you don't have time to be watching two and a half hour movies. You need to sit down and find something entertaining that's also educational. So a vlog, a podcast, uh, an interview process, you know, a documentary that will answer a question that you have and bring it into your entertainment, edutainment, ed education, entertainment. So I'll always be like, okay, tonight I need to study that thing tonight. And then when I'm at nighttime then or if I'm out for a walk, I'll find a video, a podcast, a YouTube video, and I'll just watch a couple of videos on that exact thing and I'll pick up the knowledge that I need to pick up those little, the golden nuggets or the aha moments throughout the day when you're like, aha, I got it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so it, Make sure you have them. It's, you. it's funny you said that because I listened to, listened, watched Gary V video yesterday and it's a prime example of that. Something you, interesting you said there, so your, your morning time, is that something you do religiously every day? You just have an hour where you just think, yeah. make notes, just sit? Every single day, never, ever. What time's that? Uh, my alarm goes off in Dubai at 6.45. Okay. Alexa shouts and roars at me every morning at 6.45 a.m. until I get up. Um, so 6.45 a.m., I spend 10 minutes getting ready, I spend 10 minutes, you know, brushing teeth, washing the face, getting dressed, and then around around 7 to 8, that's that, that that's my time. That's when I, I journal, I, I study something, I read five or six pages. Um, I'm on like day 14 now of meditation, so on the Headspace app for 14 day streak, um, which that's something I've always been trying to get into. Um, then I spend 10 minutes planning the day and then I then I start my first work block. What, um, what's the main thing you're focusing on learning at the moment? 
uh, right now, this very moment, my main thing that I'm is our education platform. So I've been studying Discord for a, a good couple of weeks right now. I've learned a lot on Discord. So again, every night before, rather than watching something on Netflix or you or whatever, I've been on, I've been watching Discord videos. How can I build a community for our students? How can I make sure it's super super valuable? What do people need? And I've been kind of built all that out. And by the time this podcast comes out, it'll probably be live. So discord is something that and building that community element i want my a life goal of mine is because you've heard me talk about bob proctor a lot um in bob proctor's lifetime he's had like 50 60 000 students me being one of them and he has a massive community of everyone who benefits from being inside there and helping one another and it's like if you leave everybody with the impression of increase that'll come back with you so every time you meet somebody increase their life in some way shape or form and that's something I've adopted from Bob, and that's why I want to build a community where ev- I leave everybody with a, with an impression of increase, and that's kind of a massive goal of mine. The last, the last percentage of my life, where, you know, I'm 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 old. My days are numbered. I want to be I want to be thankful and fulfilled, and leave a mark of thousands of people that I left them with an impression of increase. So, the community aspect is something I've really been studying the past past six or seven weeks. It's interesting. That's one of the biggest things that we I focused on in building the mastermind seven fixed scaling systems. And yeah. one of the things I like to explain it is like, as entrepreneurs, you're like lonely entrepreneur island. You're on your fucking own. Like you yeah. feel very isolated. Uh, a lot of people say if you're an online coach or you, you work from home alone as well, right? So it's yeah. a very lonely existence. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I yeah. think it's so important to have a community and be a part of something yeah. because not just to make more money, but to also be around other people who yeah. have the same challenges you do or understand the, the bottlenecks or the struggles or where yeah. you should focus because yeah. one person says one thing to you can completely change your perception of a problem or also yeah. help you blow up your business. Of course. And they're going to be your best friends for life. These people are from all corners of the world. that come in, They all get attracted into this community from like-minded energy and everyone just instantaneously clicks because of the same value, same interests, same beliefs, same visions, everyone helps each other. So these are all my best friends now in today that I've met through community. And then your community obviously expands through other people's communities that cross over and, and, and that's so networking comes in. But 100%, if you're in a business, you there's no need to be lonely. You can have your best friend that you've never met can become your best friend from a WhatsApp group or from a Discord or from a, a Facebook group, whatever the case may be. Some of my best friends today, I could fly anywhere in the world right now and, and go into any country and I'd have someone to go meet from online, from the online world, from the online network. And they're some of my best friends in the world. I haven't even met some of them face to face in real in, in real life, but that's, it, you know, it's... I think that's the reality of the gifted situation we are in now, that the opportunities people have to be able to do that because... Yeah. 30, 40 years ago, you couldn't do that. Like, no, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't start a business online. You want no. to start a business, you need to fucking rent a premises, you need to do all that bullshit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When you're fixed to a location, yeah. you can only sell to people within 25 miles of where you, yeah. you're based. Yeah. Whereas now, you have the, op- the world is your shop window. Yeah. You can sell products to people, you sell products to people who are all over Australia and the US from the Middle East as we're sitting here. Mm. <laughs> That's never been a thing up until now for the first time ever in the history of recorded human human history so it's it's such a great time and people need to i recommend all the time people need to capitalize it what are you good at what are you passionate about box all that up and someone needs what you have it's just that simple one thing i always ask to think for people to think about is like what problem have you solved for yourself yeah has someone else got that problem you can solve 100 percent. i couldn't agree more we've all been through something in our life we've all been through we all have a skill we all have unique talent develop your talent and bring it to the marketplace and people people need it like Bob Proctor again going back <laughs> for a second time Bob Proctor says God's gift is to give us with enough talent and ability than we're ever capable of using our gift to God is to develop that talent so if we develop that talent the world needs the talent like you will be as you build the talent you'll become more valuable and when you're valuable then people will will come to come to you for that particular value so what would you say is your unique talent i think i'm a visionary man i only realized this like a month ago i think i have a vision i i have i have i think i can build a vision i think i have an imagination and intuition 
and in my intuition i think i can have a vision here again like the like the car thing with the 18 uh feet. 18 feet ahead i think i can have have the, the vision here and then i can work backwards connecting all the dots backwards from the vision to, to bring it to life so yeah i think i think i think i have a vision really that's i only know i only know f- what f- what know triggered f- you to discover that recently um i don't know like a lot of the stuff that i wanted to happen over the years is all to- like don't i mean don't with i mean like don't with t like i mean don't like an exact style of apartment i mean like an exact office an exact f- network group an exact relationship like all of the things that i've wanted from the, the first years they've all happened like like crazy stuff right they've all happened and i've just built the vision and i've committed to the vision i've stayed on track and i've moved towards it it has moved towards me and i, I feel like I, I just can put pieces together to to create a vision that i have to become the light and for example this this discord for example this community that i'm building that was a vision of mine 18 months ago and bob bob proctor passed away in january 2021 um no sorry 2022 last year last january so like 15 16 months ago and at that moment i was like i'm gonna i need to bring this vision to life so that's kind of it, it, it's it's kind of semi to life right now so this time next month i'm hoping it's 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 a reality so i, I feel like just building that vision um is kind of my a talent that i've developed did you ever think your vision would be you living in the middle east no yeah sorry yeah i did yeah yeah, yeah. Really? genuinely yeah, yeah yeah i used to have a vision i used to have again on the the, the coaching programs about bob proctor again but the coaching program is you have to just have a vision board you have to have a vision so i used to you have like, a vision board now yeah yeah but i had to make a new one twice over the past three years because everything has happened for anyone listening did you make that in canva uh yeah canva, yeah 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 it's, i need, I need to bring it back <laughs> yeah it's not it's not it, it's it's just it's not fancy or anything it's it's very simple but one of the so i, I moved into my dream apartment in cork that was again that in cork in ireland that was again my first vision board that exact apartment I mean like not even the building the number of the apartment because my bedroom that I had a screenshot my vision board had a view of uh, a building and it's the exact view from the screenshot I moved into the exact apartment not even the building and the building had like 270 units in it right so when I moved in there I was like okay I was in there for four or five months COVID came I was like okay I need the next thing what's the next thing so I built the vision board and I took a screenshot of sun I was like I just want to be in the sun and eventually about two months later i got a i got added to again a group from a group that i was in to come to madrid i was like yeah yeah 100 percent go to madrid didn't like madrid ended up in valencia to meet another group didn't like didn't like valencia got a text you're flying around spain in a car why don't you come to marbella it's all open everything's here i was like marbella sounds amazing let's go six hour drive down to marbella came in that exact I, i drove past that exact house not only did i drive past that exact house that was on my vision board I met the real estate agent selling it in my first two weeks in Marbella so then I, I, I feel like that vision was that Playhouse Del Duque? no 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 okay. no no no. I, I never moved in there okay. I never moved in there yet yet so it's still on my vision board as a, as a villa I want to buy in the next couple of years but I drove past there but that got me to the sun so when I was you know I wanted to live in the sun okay I want I, cause I, want, to, I want to travel I want to move to different locations and that brought me to Marbella Previous, I never even entered my mind to go to Marbella. You know, in Ireland we, we go to Hol- on holidays to Ibiza every year, or Santa Panza, or whatever the case. We never ever considered Marbella, but that I put Marbella on my vision board, and then I ended up in Marbella. So, um, yeah, like just crazy things, you know. Would you recommend a vision board for anyone listening to this? I don't. I don't think you can succeed without one. I don't think you. Not not even a vision board. Like that's again. I said like my imagination is my faculty that I've developed. Whereas I think you have to have some sort of, of, of target, right? Like if you, if you walked out here, walked down the street and you asked 100 people, what's your goal? People would be like, what, what's this guy talking about? And if you find someone who has a goal, is it written down? Show me it. They're going to be like... Yeah, I've got my three big goals, my whiteboard. Yeah. Like yeah in front yeah, of me, yeah. I look at every day. So it's a super and I write it down at the start of every day, like yeah. three things I want to achieve. Yeah. So this, what I say to people is this depends on your level of seriousness. Are you serious about, about, about making a change, about getting to where you want to be? And it's like if you are, you have to you, like what what 
there's going to be no non-benefit to having a vision board like there's going to be no no net negative from having it you're going to ha you have to ha it's going to be complete net positive build a vision like you become what you think about so like think about the vision how can you get there start thinking of ideas L be more attentive listening what what are people saying could some piece of information spark an idea so if you are serious about things yeah have a vision board if all the winners of the world have a vision board you you need to have one too success leaves clues right success leaves clues and just remove your logic it sounds so stupid right have a vision board like i'm gonna look at it so my like teenage girl yeah exactly it's like it sounds it sounds so stupid right but a lesson in in the person you have to remove your logical brain your logical brain only ever got you to hear. Your logical brain will hold you back because your logical brain keeps you safe. Your logical yeah. brain doesn't want you to go fucking start a business. Exactly. It doesn't want you to go fucking move across yeah. the world. It wants you to stay in a little safety net of where you're from. And if yeah. you listen to your logical brain, yeah. you'd still be in Cork and Ireland. 100%. I, if I listened to my logical brain, I would be just still bouncing around different factory jobs and I would be majorly depressed. Majorly depressed. Like that was when I was 21, 22. I'm 26 now. I would be a very unhappy I would start becoming that sour guy looking at people that I could have done that I could have done that so eventually sorry I do recommend having a vision board and I do recommend having a goal and, and, and success leaves clues make sure that you are you're doing what successful people are doing remove the logical part of your brain and start moving towards it I had a mentor back in Cork for about six or seven months and he was like a super successful uh, financial services uh, guy and he used to do a lot of Tony Robbins stuff and I used to be like okay he's doing all that and he's successful the people who are saying it sounds stupid because it does sound stupid it sounds completely stupid it it, it does when you say oh, visualize something or, or an affirmation I'm not saying you can't just wake up and visualize an affirmation and then sit down and watch movies all day right you have to actually move towards it just as much as it moves towards you but I could say okay he's doing all this he's got a boat He's got two holiday homes. He goes on holidays all the time. He's he has a brand new Mercedes every year. He's watching Tony Robbins talk about the same stuff from a different angle that I'm watching. I just came across Bob Proctor. I just stumbled across Ty Lopez, Bob Proctor were my two go tos, right? So he just stumbled across Tony Robbins and he just done everything Tony Robbins says. So just remove the logical brain. Do what they say. Like I used to say to people, like if 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 Bob Proctor or Ty Lopez told me stand on the side of the road and jump up and down on one foot I would have done it like it just whatever they said do I just did and it worked every single time whereas so many more people I'm not say I'm not doing that it sounds stupid you you can't your logical brain will, will, will stop you like it, it doesn't want you to to do things that are uncomfortable so yeah I think just remove the logical part of your brain and get to work and I think it's one of those things you don't know what you don't know so you don't know yeah. why Ty Lopez asking you to jump up and down by the side of the road yeah. like you, you don't know so just do the fucking thing yeah. and like we get it from our mastermind point of view sometimes people don't do what they're told to do and yeah. then they don't see results whereas the ones who do kill it because it's like yeah. when you know what works it's really yeah. easy it's the same as a fitness perspective yeah. like we have coach, co coaching clients it's like losing body fat is really fucking easy yeah. and really simple but people just can't yeah. execute and actually do what they're told yeah. to do and adhere to the process yeah. and what it is and here's here's the deeper part of all that what I, what I figured I was like we all know how to lose body fat. We all know how to get in the best shape for life. We all know if we want to scale our business, we need more clients, more systems, whatever. But we don't do. So there's a gap between the knowing and the doing. And by you visualizing, you're telling your subconscious mind that you're deserving of that, and you'll start doing, you'll start, your knowing and doing gap will start closing. So you have a knowing and doing gap. That If that starts to close, you will start to tell yourself, oh yeah, your, your mind will start to agree that yeah you can be this guy or this is for you or, or this is your pathway or this is your plan and your logic your logic will start to go away and you start closing that gap and it's your image of yourself will start to move towards it and i think that's what people people again you don't know what you don't know just like you said so no one knows about that extra level but that extra level actually explains quite a lot and that's what i've learned from again from my research basically what's the five-year goal for you at the moment sorry what's the five-year goal for you at the moment so a five-year goal, I want to have a couple of, I suppose, homes. So I want to buy land back in Ireland in the next 18 months, maybe two years, maybe, and start building my, my dream home there. Um, and that'll be like, you know, raise a family, 
you know that that will be the the place like that would be my, my my home do you think you'll move back to ireland at some point no i won't live there a lot i'll just have the house there and i'll, I'll that i retire there basically that that would be my that would be my base that'd be my irish base whenever i'm in ireland that's my home i stay there five six months of the year um i also as i said i want to buy a villa in marbella so i want to kind of have two two or three different homes um and then just 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 i have a lot of goals in my mind but i really want to i really want to kind of keep setting the foundation and have again like i said a massive community that's a goal of mine i want to have a massive community i want to have a phenomenal company the brands i own i want them to be in a really really good position i do want to employ everyone in my network like i want to employ family members i want to give careers to 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 my siblings and, and 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 to help people as much as I can for them to become a part of of what we're building as a whole and yeah eventually you know move back home to Ireland when when I'm a little bit older start you know I, I want to have a family I want to have have everything I want to have you know the house tick the all the boxes tick all the boxes yeah 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 continue my bloodline <laughs> so then moving to Marbella to Dubai. Yeah. What did you? What drove the move there? What did you like, dislike about Marbella? What do you like, dislike about Dubai, if anything? Um, so in Marbella, I suppose I was in. What happened in Marbella is I, amazing house, but what happened was it was a, a little bit of. I just had a rough patch. Everything was going wrong. A couple of private things that were going wrong ended up in the doctor. I had like my my mental health wasn't in a good position for like three or four months. Um, and I just kind of needed a change. And then actually two nights in a row, someone tried to break into our, our house. So the first time I went downstairs, someone was literally putting something into the door trying to snap the lock. And I came down to around the light and they ran away. The next time someone was pulling the window, I can't remember what happened, so two nights in a row. So I ran the landlord, I was like, look, I'm, I'm not staying here because we there was like nine brand new bills. And I think like four or five out of the nine had been broken into. And it was like, perfect house so I was like okay something it, it did not nothing felt right my energy was off I couldn't sleep it was a horrendous time so I needed a change um, and basically just had a lot of friends in Dubai I was like it just sounds it sounds like the future it sounds like for me it so it sounds you know like the place to go so that made it just made me think okay I need to get there I need to go there so um, came here loved it had to fly home then just to take care of a lot of stuff and now I came back just after Christmas. But the difference between the both, I suppose, is I think Marbella is more of a playground, maybe. I think there's a lot more, like... People don't seem to work in Marbella, no, really. No, 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 people don't work in Marbella. Like, again, I literally felt like an alien sometimes working in Marbella. <laughs> so, again, I never struggled with that discipline, though. Like, I, and it's more enjoyable for work. If I'm at a beach club on a Wednesday, I'm I'm agitated, I'm, ang- I'm anxious, I can't relax. I, it's totally unenjoyable for me. I just might as well go back to the desk and work, right? Because I'm just not mentally there anyway. So eventually, sorry, essentially the Marbella was just kind of not really a fit. I don't feel like it's a growth place. It feels really. a bit like a retirement place or like party place, right? Yeah, or if you're a content creator, you know, that that's an amazing place to go. It's, if the gyms are amazing, the network is great. It, it, there's great restaurants, there's a lot to do. But if you're like, Serious about business. Yeah, like 60 70% of my life is sat at my desk. Or like I go from my desk in my office in my spare bedroom over to my kitchen table on the laptop. <laughs> so on the weekdays, that's about how exciting my life gets. Um, so, but I feel Dubai is very much more future thinking. It, it, people think bigger. You, when you walk down the, around the marina or my building and your building who are next door to each other, like you look up and you're like, whoa. What Someone's the fuck is this? Yeah. big here. Someone's thinking big here. This is, it's, it's very much very much the future like there's there's a fantastic network here there's something to do every night and it's like when i'm when you're back home for example i was back home for three months in fourth quarter last year okay you wake up you work eight ten twelve hours you do your normal day's work then there's not much to do after and it's very hard to recharge or stay inspired stay motivated because when you're finishing work back home you're kind of just you don't really do much you might go for a walk go to the gym come back again watch a movie watch a podcast and you're kind of ready ready for bed right it's kind of the days just kind of all blend into one whereas out here when you do a day's work you finish there might be a dinner you know we every week we're going to a cigar lounge we're going renting cars we're going to the palm we're going to doing diff- different things all the time 
and it's kind of it's that recharge slash inspiration that keeps the energy going really do you find the more this is one of the things i think i've learned the hard way and is that you need to sometimes work less to get better results out of yourself because i can fucking grind myself into the ground but i'm not productive the results what i do with shit my decision making is really poor whereas almost it seems sometimes the less i work the better i seem to do and the better i seem to perform because i can think more clearly and i'm more efficient in terms of the way i work if that makes sense yeah i completely agree completely agree i think i I heard someone say i don't know who it was but someone said the, the comparison of uh like rambo coming in right it's spraying everywhere it's 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 going crazy or then there's like you know um jason Bourne, yeah sniper so it's like do you want to take take out the objective but leave a huge mess or do you want to step back a little bit be you know fully ready prepared and strategic and boom take out the target from that way <laughs> this is an interesting thing though because I think at the beginning of a business you have to be fucking Rambo your yeah. Gatling gun it's fucking hustle 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 <laughs> yeah. but as the bigger the business gets <laughs> you then if you're Rambo and you're fucking Gatling gunning people you start Gatling gunning yeah. your own staff and causing problems yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah. you actually can create more problems in your business yeah. with that approach rather yeah. than like taking a step back and like slow smooth smooth yeah. fast like being specific and thoughtful with your actions, which is why I really liked what you said in terms of sitting down and like just thinking. Yeah, exactly. Thinking is, is the mo- thinking is the highest capable thing we're able to do. Like the only thing that separates us from a, a cat or a, an animal on the street is is thinking. We've the higher faculties that we can we can think. We've your will, imagination, intuition, etc. So we can actually constructively think. And most people actually don't think. You, you, you can actually constructively think. Like ment- mental activity is not really thinking. All of our brains are going all the time. There's information coming in everywhere. But if we're actually not super focused in actually strategically, critically thinking, we might make the wrong decision. So I bought an iPad. On the iPad, I'm lo- logged into anything. No social media, no work on the iPad. I just have my a Good Notes 2.0 app and I have a Kindle on the iPad so in the morning there's no laptop there's no phone you're not a fan of pen and paper no 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 <laughs> I didn't feel uh, techy enough with pen and paper so I have everything in the iPad and I have again my vision board on the iPad I have my notes in the iPad I have uh, I, I save articles all the time and just 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 save them as a document and I read back in there I have a Kindle with a thousand books there so I do spend like 30 minutes in the morning on the iPad but then I I, I, I would map out what I need to do and try to go into that Jason Bourne mode throughout the day so that's super important the critical thinking I, th- I think I know what the answer is going to be to this but before you go into thinking mode do you not check email whatsapp slack no. any of that shit yeah, yeah. the hardest thing ever to do but, but like cause this is actually probably the biggest challenge in entrepreneurship and yeah. actually being in Dubai for me makes it worse so when I'm yeah. I spend a lot of time in like Vegas in the US when I'm over there it's cool right because our most of our sales and stuff done by 3pm <laughs> their, their time uh, and then not stress the rest of the day and whatever's happened's happened. Yeah. I wake up the next morning, we have we don't really we don't take calls overnight, there's no sales, so I'm not like looking for anything. Yeah. Whereas here, I wake up and like all of our stuff's happened overnight. Yeah. So yeah. you're either like you can either start your way day like super pumped or yeah. you're like really pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the really important things in terms of talking about like the emotional roller coaster of yeah. being an entrepreneur is like learning to understand to handle these things. And yeah. the bigger your business gets, the more that pulls you up and down, I find. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, again, that would, that would drive me mad too. If you wanted to go in every morning and see what happened the previous day, I would need to, <laughs> that would be a, a difficult thing not to, you know, log in and check every morning. But what I say to myself is, in the morning, if I look at this, for, if I spend the first 30 minutes or 45 minutes on my phone first thing, I will be messy throughout the day. I will be like more distracted. I won't be super focused. Like I won't have that critical thinking done. Um, Whereas if I just do everything in my willpower to not look at my, my phone or my emails or anything in the morning and have this little bit of me time, I have a much more relaxed throughout for the rest of the day. Um, so yeah, it's super hard, but it's gotta be done. What would you say is the biggest challenge you have as an entrepreneur? The biggest challenge I have as an entrepreneur? Um, I suppose like dealing with a lot of pressure, I can't really switch off, right? Because yeah. Like it used to be one company. Now we've we, we've five companies now. So it's like it, there's a lot there's a lot going on in different areas, and it's very hard to kind of fully switch off. It's very hard to, to you know like oh, when I was lying in bed last night like half half eleven, I had to 
oh yeah, I forgot one thing I had to do and I had to get up out of bed, go back in, turn on my work phone, send a voice message for two minutes and then go back to bed. Like I've, And but then you can't really sleep because you're still thinking about sleep. it. And then yeah. 45 minutes flew by and I, I, that took out of my sleep, right? So yeah, definitely switching off. I would love, like I see I see some of these people on YouTube there and like the Maldives and stuff like that and I'm like, you're going next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's your switch off time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I would love to like, I might be going to actually in the next month or so. Do it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I just, I need more, I need to actually, I need to get more strategic in my, I need to get more Jason Bourne style because I'm just used to like, like my mother calls me like a, a problem solver. I ne- when I was younger, I nearly create a problem just so I can solve it. Yeah, I'm a bit like, but, but this is interesting. I think all entrepreneurs are like that because we yeah, like yeah, fixing yeah. shit. Yeah, 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 fixing shit. It's so almost like, if everything's going really smoothly, it's boring, it's which so is boring. which is wrong. It's like what, what 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 do you do all day, right? So it's like, yeah, it's like kind of be more strategic. But yeah, a, li- a little bit more more. I I I I, sh- I want to take more time off now this this time around. I mean, I'm five years in now. I should be able to to take you know a week off here there and everywhere whenever I want to so it's actually one of the weirdest things I think I did last summer I went to the Maldives for four days didn't have my phone on yeah. and it, like I'm not going to lie the anxiety the first day or two was insane right and like yeah. fucking twitching yeah. and like <laughs> and, but uh after day two, like the world continues, I'm still alive. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, ironically, like I like logged into my laptop in fucking the airport, at, like Marley Airport in Maldives, and I was like fucking logging in, and everything continued as if I wasn't there, yeah. like, as if nothing happened. Yeah, and then, yeah, but yeah. then you also start to think, what the fuck do I do all the time? Because yeah. like the business runs fine without me being there. You told me but, this before. Uh, I seem super busy, so yeah, I'm like, yeah, what yeah. am I actually doing? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You and that, and that's when you sometimes think. Do you, are you becoming a busy fool and creating yeah. stuff for yourself to do? Yeah. Which is what I know if anyone listening to this probably does. Yeah. You do the fucking roulette wheel of like Slack, email, WhatsApp, fucking Facebook, Instagram. You go yeah. looking for stuff to yeah, fix yeah, yeah. rather than yeah. being proactive with things. Yeah. Slack warrior. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred percent. I completely agree. I definitely do that sometimes today. I definitely am in Slack, you know, reading over a channel that I'm out of the loop on and I'm putting in my two cents here and I'm putting in my two cents there whereas I'm just like the team like they, they have a cover like you know they, they're doing an amazing job everything's been done to perfection it couldn't be done any better and I just need to kind of just leave it but it's just it's just I can't it's like the it's like that rope right you just can't you can't let go of it so yeah one last thing what's your opinion on what's going on at the moment in terms of like economic issues obviously what's going on with the US dollar yeah what are your thoughts on that so that's terrifying it's terrifying I try not to just. I try not to let the the worries of tomorrow. I read a book from Dale Carnegie called "How to Stop Worrying and Stop Start Living," because when I, I probably saying, need to read that. To be fair. Yeah, it's a good book. It's a good book. Le- Lesson one is a book: how to keep your life in daytight compartments. So every day should be airtight. Okay. Never think about tomorrow while you're in your day. In your day, and it's, it's it's quite helpful. So I try not to worry about tomorrow, but it is definitely terrifying because again, I don't know how. Politically, we can get on. Yeah, I don't even say it a lot. I don't give a shit. <laughs> but uh, like when you look at it, the U.S. dollar being being in trouble, right? That like there's a lot of everything is backed by the U.S. dollar, from from oil to the euro to the pound, AD. Like it, it, it's it's a little bit it's a little bit crazy, right? So if that loses power, like does inflation go up and up and up again? And it's like what is the new what is the new currency? And the power follows the control of the currency, right? So what what's that unfair the unknown is there what's going to happen um and like again the powers of the world are able to sanction each other sanction other countries due to currency control so if they lose currency control and they can other countries who can step out of line and we don't know what that can happen in the economic world again i'm not an expert in anything this is just again my own research and keeping up to date but what's going to happen there is is totally unknown and that's kind of some I don't know. Nobody actually knows, but it's something to kind of keep keep your ear on a little bit. So I definitely think there's a lot of fear in the world. I think there's a lot of fear in the world. I think there's a lot of um, just unknown, really. So again, I'm just air to airtight compartments today. Don't want to go tomorrow. Stay um, today. That's one of the things I was trying to just like focus on what you can control. It's why I yeah. never gave a shit really about politics or anything like that. Like, yeah, same. They're, I don't they're even all, know anything. Yeah, I, I don't. 
the Rishi Sinak, the Prime Minister, I don't even know. Like, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, I couldn't give a shit about who, who's in charge because yeah. they're all the same. And it's not going to change your life. Yeah, they're not going to change my yeah. life. And yeah. it is what it is. And the same as whoever comes yeah. President of the United States, like, yeah. it is what it is. And exactly. It there's doesn't no make point. any difference yeah. to, to my day to day mm. life. So I'm not going to get bogged down. I'm not going to let it steal my emotion and my energy throughout the day. Same with COVID. If, when people when I hear people honestly COVID is super 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 bad okay let it be bad I'm like it's not it's not gonna I'm, I'm still gonna go to bed tonight I'm still gonna eat my dinner tonight like I don't need to carry around this extra level of fear on my shoulders for the rest of the day because COVID is bad if it's bad let it be bad like and that's why I don't watch I haven't watched the news in probably six years I'd say seven years well maybe once or twice checking in over 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 COVID or if it's just on or whatever but I just don't need you just we just don't need that extra level of fear or worry in our lives I have enough to worry about in my little Adam Powers if we're there <laughs> so uh, what would be your one final piece of advice for anyone listening to this who's been inspired by your journey my journey and is looking to start their own business or get success with their current online business look if you're looking to do it like what have you got to lose like I think most people I think I, I genuinely think people and I, maybe I used to think this myself so I used to think that when you get to the end of your life okay ah you're like ah next time I know what to do no different but you, there is no next time this is it like we're at it now it's it's no it's go time now so if you want to start a business you have to do what you want you only have you only have one life like you know you're going to regret it in the end if you don't anyway so I always just think heaven and hell will be before you die heaven and hell will be the last the last stretch of your life do you want that to be sitting there somewhere with no real friends or maybe your family is you know whatever the case may be of of, of regret and unhappiness or do you want to live there fulfilled excited blessed you know staying there and like you have to do what you want to do from from today to then so that, that that's what really motivates me is to, to, to stay there but I mean, like, you, you, if something's inside you, right? If something's inside you that wants to come out, it's, it's, it's you know, p- people who are w- watching this, if you want to do it, you, you know that it's, it's there. You know it's probably there for a while, or else you wouldn't be watching this podcast. You wouldn't be watching particular YouTube videos. You wouldn't have an understanding of the books that I've mentioned throughout this thing. You need to, you know it's there. You just need to pull it out now. You need, it's time to pull it out. Like, there's no, there's never, ever, ever going to be the perfect time. It doesn't even exist. So if you can, just start now with what you have make a decision and then literally your life will, will will change from there so my my you know my advice for people is to just get started again go back to steve harvey he made ten dollars ten times made a hundred dollars ten more times he made a thousand ten more times ten thousand just start small snowball effect compound effect and just Execute. Execute, man. Execute. You just get it get get started. <laughs> awesome. Where's the best place for anyone to find out more about what you do, Adam? Um I suppose Instagram would probably be best. Adam Power nine six. Um on Twitter, Adam Power two one, Adam Power twenty one. Um and my TikTok if I'm getting someone on my TikTok so I can't yeah. I can't figure that out. I'm too old for that now. <laughs> so uh, I should be on TikTok soon. But yeah, Instagram or or our, our Twitter would be best awesome thanks so much for your time for everyone who enjoyed and loved the podcast make sure you leave us a 5 star review if you're watching on YouTube make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next episode very soon thank you